Okay, so here's the original um, Mark I um, steering U-joint system, and here is the fabricated system I took from the, um, the two, two different Mark III steering shafts. So the Mark III has got a, uh, a different spline uh, for the steering column, but it has the same 11 16 diameter 40 spline um, as the uh, original Mark I. So you can take a bolt out and uh, slip this end off. And then what I did is I just cut this and then I just machined another groove in it. So this is adjustable now. And I found that the best length for my setup, with everything aligned correctly, is about a half an inch longer than the, the stock. So with this I can expand it up to a, about an inch uh, by loosening these bolts. So what I did is I actually put in the car with these bolts loose, got everything aligned perfectly, it found the right position, got it snugged up, and a uh, half an inch longer is what, what worked. Um, still need to clean these up a little bit and paint it and all that. Um, the other thing is, you'll notice with um, stock or you know Mark 1 or Mark 2 or Mark 3 or whatever, that uh, you get some, you probably rarely get sort of the, 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 the normal U-joint wear but you get a little bit of side-to-side -side motion as the needle bearings move sort of in and out of their little sockets. Um, and so what you can do, and I know some people don't have a huge amount of success with these staying tight, but you can, I'm just using a nine millimeter socket and uh, just pound down these and then take a punch and then reset the, um, the holding um, it dents. And so I've done that all around. Uh, just to snug it up. If you if you push this down too far, you can back it out by sort of tapping it with a flathead screwdriver on the inside, pushing it back up. But you get it to sort of where it's tight and doesn't have any any side to side wiggle either, um, which is much less noticeable than the, than the, than the rotational or torsional um, looseness you get from from a worn out joint. But these things, punch them in, um, and then get them just just so they're just nice and snug. And it should be good to go. So I'm I'm super happy with this. Uh, what else am I doing here? Oh yeah, I just want to show you briefly over here. Um, this is the V clamp, and it's uh, it's kind of hard to see. I should take it apart. But basically, there's two two different um, shells that are you can sort of you know, weld around the collar here on each end, and then this clamps over the two of them. So you take two. Um, tubes of uh, exhaust and you can tap them together. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to use a two and a half inch pipe for the tailpipe. Um, these are 30 degree bends, two of them, and I'm going to cut them and make, um, this is the two and a quarter inch that came from Tectonics that goes in the end of the, uh, the muffler. It wasn't quite right. It was these two lines should be exactly parallel and, and it's, they're off by five degrees. So anyway, this slips inside this. So this is two and a quarter inch OD and this was two and a quarter inch ID. So I've now got two and a half uh, inch um, OD, which is two and three eighths ID, which will slip over this snug. And then I can weld this on. So what I'll do is I'll make the two and a half inch tailpipe that'll fit under this. So basically the two and a quarter inch goes, slips in here, and then the outside of this slips in there. So it goes slightly larger, slightly larger as it gets to the very end of the car, which is gonna be fine. So I'll be able to weld up all this uh, exhaust stuff uh, this weekend. Oh, and the last thing is I'd had to take this apart for some reason. Well, I know why now. I was damaging the, uh, the Hall effect sensor and uh, I was, until I pulled this thing all apart and I found out there's plus and minuses for the power supply and then the output is an open collector which means you need a resistor tie the resistor to high to uh, to, to the 12 volts and then it'll pull down otherwise it floats um, so now I bought a new one and clearanced it so this is all done and it's all toleranced and set up and it's ready to roll I can bolt it on the engine now so that's that's good that's it now what's going on here is this is the US Rabbit GTI um, servo for the brakes, and it's eight and a half inches long from this face here, where it mounts to the bracket to the end of this. And the Mark 
um, two, which uh, you need because I switched to the 22 millimeter piston master cylinder, so that wouldn't fit the original uh, serial bar. I've gone to the Mark II master cylinder uh, from a, a 89 Cabriolet or something like that, and um, it's the Cabriolet stole Mark II parts basically from because it kept on going and overlaid. You know, the Mark I design was overlaid with the Mark II. Anyway, this is shorter and it's threaded. So you'd have an adjustable clevis pin for the brake pedal and um, it's about an inch and a half shorter than this because it needs the clevis to be attached to it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this off, I'm going to turn it down on the lathe and then thread it. This is just a standard 10 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter thread, coarse thread. So use a coupling nut and some jam nuts and be able to have an adjustable um, this, it's always nice to have an adjustable brake pedal, um, so I'm going to adjust it, have it adjustable and have some, some play. So I'll get the brake pedals, I'm getting the brake pedals all painted up this weekend and get that whole assembly all redone, mount all this stuff, measure the exact uh, distance I need, and then I'll cut this and thread this to, um, to, the right, to, uh, to the right dimension, and then be able to screw it onto the end of this, and then I should be done. <laughs> Just a quick note before I install the header. Um, so I sent this out for ceramic uh, internal coating and uh, it took a three or four days longer than it was supposed to have. And then when I got him back, he'd only coated the first six inches at the top and the bottom of the headers, which is not hugely useless, but pretty close to it. And um, so anyway, I had a can of the Eastwood internal exhaust coating that's supposed to be good for 1800 Fahrenheit. So I took some foam, wrapped some 80 grit sandpaper around it in a string and pulled it through the tubes dozens of times to roughen the internal surface up and you know, use compressed air to blow it all out and then I used an in internal um, spray wand uh, from both ends and uh, did two coats of the uh, Eastwood product. So. We'll see how this all works out, whether it'll stick or whether it gets heated up and flakes off. Well, who knows, at least it's, it's new metal and the surface was sandblasted and then uh, sandpapered and stuff, so hopefully the surface has uh, some bite to it and the, uh, this coating will, uh, will, will, will stay. It's, uh, it feels like a pretty damn tough paint, so we'll, uh, we'll see. I think it'll work. We'll know because the headers will either turn um, bluey-brown or they won't and I'll be able to tell. Okay, I'm gonna install all the stuff now and start installing the exhaust system this weekend. So this is the J clamp assembly. There's two pieces that go together. I've just welded this on so it's hot, so I don't want to touch it too much, but um, basically these two pieces go like this with the um, uh, the, the uh, two and a quarter inch stainless tubing slipping inside. And then this clamp goes around and holds it together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this to the rest of the exhaust system, um, clamp it, tack, tack, tack weld this, this piece to the um, Tectonics rear exhaust section and then take the exhaust, rear exhaust system out and then finish uh, welding the collar on. And uh, this attaches to the header which I just took off the header and it's all aligned beautifully so should be good. So the uh, catalytic converter with the flex pipe and the V-band clamp are done. That was the last piece of the exhaust system, so it's all all fits in nicely. And I can swap that in and out with the resonator as required for emissions inspections and other things like that. So these are the finished exhaust system components. I'm about to bolt them in. Just wanted to show them to you because they're a lot harder to see once they're installed. So it's T304 stainless. This is the a system that I modified a tectonics two and a quarter inch um, system. And it was a bit custom to begin with because of the race headers and um, the fact I had a Mark III block, which is a tall deck block. So 16 valve, tall deck block, and then Mark I car required a, um, you know, different headers. So what, what I've done here is I've made 
um, the same the um, catalytic converter for emissions testing and all that kind of stuff. It's the same length and uh, and fit up to the header as the um, the um, um, resonator here, which is what I'll normally use. So um, basically, they both have the flex four inch flex pipe so that uh, it takes a little bit of stress off the exhaust system. And exhaust tubing is done with, um, when you say two and a quarter inch, it's two and a quarter inch outside diameter, OD. And then when you get to a muffler, like a Borla muffler, any, any, any normal muffler, the actual fittings on the end, this is two and a quarter inch ID so that the tube can slip into it. And so what I've done is I've um, put a two and a half inch exhaust on the back of it and I, um, I basically cut the flange off really tight and then got to nine, uh, 30 degrees and then I've, I've, I've sort of got the, the length and everything set so that now I have my bad boy uh, two and a half inch exhaust at the back and I got these things sort of semi polished up not a super super high gloss but uh, you know a nice a nice look to them and uh, I'm gonna pop them in now. So that was my weekend. Lots of work, probably about 20 hours to get that done. But it fits perfectly now. So the exhaust system is in now. And uh, I've got space with that shifter boot. There's a good half inch clearance there. And uh, I've got a little bit of the titanium exhaust wrap uh, where the uh, fuel tank is. It, there's enough clearance. Um, it's a little bit close to the axle, but just because the axles drop, you know, four inches, and it'll it'll there'll be space when uh, when uh, the car is on its feet. Um, and here, I've got. A, I'll show you. I'll get to the back. I've got um, a beautiful view at the back here. So basically. It's nice to have that badass two and a half inch uh, stainless pipe sticking out the back. And uh, from a distance perspective, I've got it sticking out three inches, which I think is about you know, tasteful. Um, I got a hanger worked out really well at the back. I can sort of see how I did the hanger there. Anyway, um, this is the trick that Auto Tech uh, hollow bar. It's going to be pretty close when the suspension is fully loaded to touching uh, the muffler, the side of the muffler. It looks like it's going to have like a tiny bit of clearance to it. Uh, we'll see. I may have to move the muffler over a little bit or give it a bit of a bang with a hammer and make a little dent in it or something. I don't know. Anyway, exhaust systems, you know, trying to put a big exhaust system in, a, in an old Mark I, it's a tight fit, but uh, the Tectonics uh, system works beautifully, and uh, I've tweaked it with the V-band uh, clamps and a bunch of like the custom tailpipe and stuff, but basically it fit nicely, really, really nicely, and I think it's going to be great. So, and I'm glad I got that front brace on the header to, to support it, but uh, it's perfectly positioned and it doesn't want to move, it looks like it wants to stay where exactly where I put it, so I'm, I'm happy.